course is like uh, uh, looking at uh, entrepreneurship skills, uh, which is very difficult to learn without the sort of you know project on hand, though it's a theory course. Uh, uh, and then the students have uh, got a lot of inputs uh, from various sources, uh, you know, from various incubators, various people. So we have a lot of information in mind, but, you know, they're synthesizing it, still in the process of synthesizing. So, you know, uh, this interaction would also, you know, make them much more aware of how their work is going on and, you know, and uh, of course, get a good direction. Hi, we're from Scoop and... Uh... We're team six and we're a team of four and we, our vision is to make feeding experiences fun. And uh, talking about our team, we have Abhishek, Anish, Siddharth and I, Tanya, and we have our strengths in very different fields. But when we started talking, one thing that really resonated was that one experience of having that nagging feel while eating as kids and our mothers used to get irritated and even our fathers and it was a really stressful time for us. So, and even our parents. So then we thought of identifying that as a need and, you know, understanding those feeding difficulties that are suspected. And when toddlers actually show these signs of meal rejection and then there's stressful, prolonged meal times. And now we have even larger meal times because we have introduction of iPads and iPhones. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have these uh, problems of independent feeding. So the kids do not know by the age of four also, they do not know that there is something called independent feeding and they fail to even finish their lunch boxes at school. And then there's also this another need of, you know, failure to progress with uh, from maybe from mashed potato to broccoli. So that's very, uh, you know, that's the transitional phase, the phase, the stage one when you're a toddler. So identifying these needs, we started thinking of how might we, uh, you know, bring in or reimagine these tangible ways to make eating experiences for toddlers more interactive, more playful, uh, while also reducing the stress for these caregivers and parents. And uh, then we uh, sort of divided that. So of course, our customers then become the caregivers and the parents and users become our toddlers, which is one to three. And coming to the customer discovery part, we uh, went through these 10 interviews and these are the kids of the people we interviewed. And what is interesting about this whole uh, phase till now is that the assumptions that we had while phasing, you know, phrasing that need identification, for example, we said that this problem in independent feeding, but while talking to one of the people we interviewed, she said that my daughter is four year old, but she cannot have food uh, even now because she never had the right spoon to have it. So that's one of the latent needs that we found. So we did not assume it. So then pulling all these insights together, we sort of understanding how might we create, you know, value from these insights. So far, we had uh, properly gauged that we want to intervene very naturally in a very tangible way. And hence, we identified who our customers will be. So these could be parents and caregivers who are vigilant and look out for the kids. And then they are intuitive. They are very selective while choosing their products. And they are a bit experimental in nature as well to try out new uh, uh, ways to you know help better their uh, kids life e but during play or even eating so uh, from the uh, interviews we conducted we laid out a few of the gains and pains so uh, from the pains and gains we already had some assumptions and then there were some new discoveries so uh, we set out to solve or help parents and caregivers to help reduce stressful eating and the time consuming aspects of it. There are many working professionals nowadays and they don't have time early in the morning to you know, sit with their kids and uh, just uh, you know, spend some uh, time in the beginning of their day. And hence we were also trying to see how we can relieve these pains through a, a very fun uh, product or could be an intervention in general. And hence we set out to map out our business model now that we know that the uh, the intervention is going to be a tangible product we then know uh, we can uh, collaborate with manufacturers and even learn from the craftsmen and artisans and uh, how they have been uh, making toys uh, traditionally and we also question why is it uh, that this problem occurred in the very first place and even went back to how early humans tried to feed their children and then uh, going on to uh, the, the key activities. So uh, we thought of uh, developing certain ideas and products and then to channel them through different e-commerce platforms and websites could be, the, the segments could be very different. Uh, 
from it could be even sold to uh, affluent uh, customers as well as you know uh, uh, in the middle income group as well so and then we could uh, we have the revenues uh, through the product sales and even we could reach out to instagram and social media influencers nowadays who have a very large influence over uh, a, ma- a mass crowd and now after uh, having this in place we thought of then coming up with certain ideas so so now that we actually have you know as abhishek said all the theory that we gathered from all these interviews we felt like we owe it to the people to actually conceive a tangible product at least and not just end it at a theory phase so uh, at this stage we were not being very practical with you know is this possible can we injection mold it and we did some fantasy analogy and we tried to capture the things that a lot of mothers said like storytelling is something i think we all remember you know it's always like oh play and aya that that whole aspect of fun play the, the whole feeling experience is something so joyous and happy and that's what we wanted to capture in these products so even things like kinetic and mobile so it's usually all mothers and children associate feeding time with something mobile you know either the kid is running around but that itself is a very wonderful experience we wanted to capture so then we started sketching out all these uh, posters that we had so again at this stage it was not not trying to go very practical and even think of a seesaw you know what if a parent is having meal with their children in a seesaw form yes the food will right. probably spill out but what if that's another fun activity what if there's an actual food ball you know kids actually play with football but a food ball like uh, siddha i remember one of your parents saying are gir gaya to kya ho gaya seek to liya remember and the and the other <laughs> yes, people around on the table was saying nahi 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 girna chahiye saaf rakhna chahiye yes, remember yes, yes, yes. Uh, mm, very good because it's all it's all fun you know as long as your child is eating learning it's fun you know no one's really worried about oh ye theek nahi hai so even a fidget plate the the plate uh, the sketch on the top right the plate could be stuck to the table and there could just be a simple fidget toy on the side of it so the kid is kind of occupied instead of looking at the ipad he is at least interacting near the food and uh, so one example we saw was that life boy hand wash so the simple color changing hand wash so kids were encouraged to wash their hands for 30 seconds till the color changes so a very simple cue like a color change makes them interact with the you know activity more so what if every time you lift the spoon up or every time you take a bite there's a small color change in the spoon or the plate so the kid is not you know yes. they don't need any digital distraction they're not eating alone they're not wondering of just a small interaction with the product so then we started to actually deep dive a little more into the forms and how we could actually prototype from this fantasy analogy so the whole storytelling aspect what if we actually have a literal spoon on it and so there were some concepts around shaping the spoon like an aeroplane but why not use the propeller to actually cool the food we thought of practical uses forms could have you know kids could probably see a fork as a snail because nowadays we see a lot of graphics on to spoons but what if we just shape the spoon accordingly so i remember a scene from toy story 4 where this kid actually makes a diy fork and it's called forky so you know she just takes these two eyes on the fork and it becomes a favorite toy and and just some personal association because why shape a fork like a fork so then we sketched out a jelly fork you know the whole aim of a fork or a spoon is just to take the food it doesn't have to be shaped like a fork because we are telling the kids okay, okay this is how a fork is but that's not how a fork should be so just animals uh, and a multi ball you know the reason kids actually uh, they usually just use a spoon even to pick up fruits but why not give them like a multi tool kit to just play around and explore the food with so then uh, we did a quick matrix to look at the pains and gains of the current market because obviously there's a lot of work being done around you know this industry and we identified a lot of the positives from the current products and then um we started to kind of take all the pros together and the final sketch that we have on the next slide is an amalgamation of uh concepts of uh you know helping the kid hold it better and being inspired from ancient toys i think from your own anish can further elaborate yeah thanks for that so yeah moving forward so uh, when when it came to a tangible uh, product that we had to uh, look at that could be released in the market we again in this particular idea we started off looking at what the feeding patterns used to be back in the days because now we were, we were looking back in evolution how you know the ancient used to feed them and uh, uh, probably that is where we branched uh, into what we are right now 
but we were questioning why you know children are repelled by the habit of eating there is something wrong that we are doing you know there could be some some sort of you know uh, 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 you know it's it's natural and inherent that you know the kid is uh, repelled by the act of eating or feeding and and we were trying to understand by looking back in time into these uh, objects that you can see in the top corner of the uh, screen which were these feeding bowls which were you uh, made for uh, children back in the days and also the one towards the left which is uh, again a, a form of a bowl which has a suckling output uh, through which the uh, baby uh, sort of drinks drinks the milk so that itself was um, sort of very striking because it was uh, very natural and inherent of uh, babies to hold with both both their hands and sort of suckle it like how they drink uh, breast milk so we uh, sort of started uh, ideating this um, uh, these uh, this product line with uh, associations with animal animals which we picked up from one of the interviews and which uh, we can also see in this replicas of these olden uh, pots that animals were something that is inherently like you know very attracted um, uh, babies were attracted to uh, animals and and their form so we started looking at animals and and how we can economically make a baby empowered of uh, the whole feeding process and sort of eliminate the parents involvement and make them empowered and be attracted to the uh, uh, attracted to the product and be able to handle and operate it by themselves so we are looking at a series of products phase, uh, in different phases where uh, we also look at transitioning these uh, these uh, shapes and module uh, modules that are attached so that it it uh, fits and uh, helps the, the baby feed in their different uh transition phases starting from liquid foods to semi solids and to solid foods so this particular product we are focusing on uh, uh, liquid and thick uh, fluid uh, food so we started off with uh, looking at uh, simple geometric shapes of uh, vessels that uh, is easy for the uh, baby to hold and uh, sort of operate with and started making it uh, chisel it uh, to create animal forms over it and then uh, we we gave it a basic form and we actually sent it back to our uh, you know customers who were whom we had interviewed and asked for their opinion and they had a few interesting suggestions as on to you know uh, opening the opening the um, making the opening larger on the top where they fill in the stuff and how they they'll be able to clean it and stuff so we try to incorporate that points also and see how the baby could be holding it and interacting with it so this was a sort of 3d prototype that we came up with based on incorporating all these comments with uh, with an openable you know spill proof tight lid that once is filled it doesn't come out and the baby can play with it and eventually also use it to drink on its own and you know make the feeding uh, hold the feeding process become very like independent and not dependent on the parents standing and making making them drink it so uh, since it's also a toy and uh, kids are very joyful and very playful about it they will be uh, we are we are guessing they'll be interacting with them while they uh, while they play with it and also be drinking uh, and having their food so this is just a quick render of uh, how our product lineup would be of different animals and how these modular clips or, or the snoots can be replaced depending on the food types and the age of the baby yeah so we had a prototype and that is how the baby is happy and interacting with the product the scale is sort of understood where they'll be able to lift it and sort of use it on their own i think it's a um, uh, it's definitely a large problem and in that you are trying to solve two of them uh, uh, you are trying to do um, making uh, meal times more fun and making uh, toddlers more independent uh, i would split hair and say take one of them uh, uh, and don't take one of them from what you like but from which has larger uh, attraction to uh, to the audience where you stand to sell more and make more money uh, so unfortunately it will be the wrong one meaning it won't uh, it won't be the make children independent one because the make children independent is one solution whereas make meal times more fun will be multiple things so i actually imagined as you were speaking that you were making toys for meal times i did not i mean you were saying things and they were coming across to me as toys for meal times i think that the jet that that you know one uh, hand strong thing that you had so i would seriously recommend think harder about which is larger business opportunity do i want to sell one uh, scoop to hundreds of people or is there a larger business opportunity in selling five different toys to a smaller uh, customer set 
and I actually think a the answer on that is simple. But I think even from a creativity point of view, you all will have more fun with creating um, meal time accessories that make feeding fun. Uh, or no, feeding is not fun. That make feeding less stressful or eating fun, whatever is the English uh, for it. So uh, even as you were doing the budget, uh, whoever was presenting, I was seeing almost like, you know, you we all used to do this. I don't know if your generation did. Oh, we did these paper it. things, which, yeah. And then you opened and there was some things. And then you said a story about that thing. So the concepts of storytelling, the concepts of play, all that can come alive wonderfully. But then I'm only, I'm solving for helping mothers make feeding less stressful. Very large business opportunity. And you don't have to restrict yourself to the cutlery. Cutlery to bahut dunya banati hai. Huh? Nobody has tried telling me how to combine cutlery with play. That's what you're telling me. That's what you're telling me. But then why do you want to make it one product at the end of it? And I don't know if this is the feedback you wanted to hear or not, but that's the... It. In, in fact, uh, it's interesting. Uh, Anu, it's also the student dynamism, no? Like, oh, Anish Nevo banaya, Siddharth ne sketches no, 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 kiya. No, I agree. No, I agree. They, they have to put it together now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. Also, also, just to add, we, uh, our main idea, uh, ultimately we detail one model. But yes. our main idea was to like create a series of products. Like we I agree. just uh, sort I agree, of... but you know, the same customer won't buy all the products unless you give her a story to buy. Yeah. So you have to give them a story which can be collect them all. These are this family collect them all. Even as I grew up in a very middle class family, we used to collect binaka toys which came in our toothpaste. Very to make a zoo. Huh? So collect them all always works, but storytelling is a bigger hook for the mother. And so you have to uh, not just solve her physical problem. You have to solve her. That's the time when a mother or even a caregiver is telling stories and it is knowledge imparting. It is, it is not just, well, uh, of course, there's a pain of feeding. But when the pain starts transitioning to not so painful, then we start telling stories. So I think the opportunity you have is wider. The audience in your case is definitely tighter. It's the upper uh, audiences. Those who don't have time, they have double income jobs, all that you kind of articulated. So I have no uh, argument with that. Uh, I wouldn't, I understand that there are segments which can be daycare centers. Uh, totally agree. They have a larger problem, but somehow children behave better in daycare centers because hmm. daycare centers don't give them the bhao that uh, moms give them. So maybe they behave better, but don't know. So I would, I would only leave you this thought that you can make a whole range. Um, uh, which combines uh, storytelling, uh, play, uh, uh, all your learnings on how to feed better with independence being a nice thing to have and not the needed dimension. But that's my point of view. It may be completely wrong. You have to validate it with customer research. So, uh, but Hajar promise, like the idea. Uh, really like the idea. In fact, uh, I'm being, a, being a designer and a professor in creativity, my second lesson in this business class was to talk about creative ideation. So no, it, I, I guess, no, I can see that. We call it fantasy analogy where Siddharth used it very effectively uh, in this presentation. <laughs> Nakul, please go ahead. Any you know, final comments? Yeah. So I think, uh, as, 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 as Anumam also mentioned, for me, this is like a, so coming from business side, looking at these design things is like, okay, I get to learn a new thing. So maybe our discussions uh, will be further enriched by what Anumayam suggested. And it depends on Siddhar, Tanya, Anish, uh, Abhishek to actually look for opportunities to take it forward rather than just keep it in the in the project state. I, I, I concluded the discussion yesterday with them with this thought only that it, it may be a challenging affair, but yes, if you can take it forward, you, you might make a fortune out of it. Right? Very good. So uh, maybe uh, taking in your inputs, I, I'm sure that the team will be able to work further. And uh, I, I got a interesting thought from you. I never thought that these are two different problems. I was still looking at a okay, cutlery because they were focused on the cutlery part. But the moment you mentioned that there are two parts, the mealtime uh, uh, being more fun and uh, toddlers becoming independent. So I realized that parents would not like the toddlers to be very independent at that stage. So tackling that issue uh, psychologically will also be a kind of a, a challenge. But yes, making mealtime more fun would be a much more bigger proposition which they can target 
and since they come from the design side as you said more number of designs more number of options and i think the analogy that you gave that paper i don't i don't even know how what to call that Good. i think that 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 thing can be taken up further ahead by the team and uh, looking at the business side yes there's a huge potential and it's like the off market it's like the real uh, yeah. you can yeah. skim them you can really skim them In turn the them Uh, so thank you so much anu for your time yeah, it is thank you so much very nice your, your yeah, energy very nice to meet you yeah yeah in fact the way you committed anu was fabulous on the nail all our eight days of learning was coming blaring at us so okay students can... hello everyone we are team number 6 our team consists of four members abhishek siddharth tanya and myself anish our product is called scoop A product scoop helps caregivers and parents with toddlers who want to make the feeding experience more playful and interactive. Scoop improves the toddler's eating experience and minimizes stressful meal times. Our product is much more engaging unlike the feeding sessions that happen with the usual cutlery made for kids. That's the pitch for our product. Thank you so much. We'll go to our next group uh... and we have our colleague uh, uh, professor uh, ashok padmalkar here with us as mentor and supporter for this project students please go ahead and uh, we want to you know see how you, you know, progressed on your uh, backpack <laughs> good afternoon everybody uh, i would like to uh, thank professor chakravarti and mr ashok padmalkar for their guidance and support throughout this project so our project is based upon Uh, providing the right backpack according to each individual's needs and requirements and we are focusing on uh, kids section so let me just introduce you to the team uh, i am uh, amir naved uh, i come from architecture background and my teammates are gorav singh he is a lifestyle accessory designer and karan raj singh he is a product and ux designer uh, our mentors are professor bk chakravarti and mr ashok panwalkar so uh, our journey started with an initial idea of trying to make uh, kids backpacks fun engaging and playful and taking that idea forward we did customer discovery and we interviewed kids and their parents because kids are the actual users of the products but they are not the buyers of course they influence the choice of uh, the purchase but their parents are the actual buyers after going through the customer discovery we found out certain insights and we found out that that is not where the problem lies and we found out many pain points and to cater or and to solve those problems our final idea was uh, came came to be as providing the right backpack to each kid based on their needs and requirements so we know that backpacks and school kids are forever together but most of the cases they don't use the right backpack according to their needs some have way bigger big backpacks some have smaller than what they need and some have uh, the backpacks of weight so much that it pulls them back so we try to give them the right backpack and we try to give them happiness we started with brainstorming and looking at many of the problems it was the uh, stage of uh, creating a hypothesis from our understanding before doing the customer discovery so we tried to jot down as many uh, pain points or uh, opportunities where we can tap into to create or give a product to our customers uh, our assumption was that kids want a backpack that is really fun engaging and playful and Uh, our target group uh, audience was uh, primary and pre-primary school kids of age group from 3 to 12, 12 year old we talked to many kids and their parents as well and we got some insights that uh, majority of the people felt that the size of backpack sometimes was as big as the kid themselves weight was another issue uh, most of the times they had issue of spilling of lunch box spoiling both the books books and stationery they did not have dedicated pockets for lunch boxes and we found out what are the things that kids are attracted to uh, for example certain colors certain video games superhero movies cartoon characters and the number of books and stationery that they have to carry to their school even in the time of pandemic when they were right at their home and they were attending classes from the uh, 
PCs or laptop screens. They still had their backpacks with them they, because they were organizing their all the books and notebooks and stationeries in the backpacks. So we believed that if we make a cool looking, funky and fun backpack, it will attract more buyers and the sale will increase. And after doing customer discovery, we observed that majority of the parents are not aware of what kind of backpacks they need in terms of functionality, ergonomics, even material and the needs of the individual kids based on the grade they are in. And they only looked at the aesthetics, material durability, and size and price while buying. And we learned that there's a mass consumer segment that we can tap into by making our offering of uh, a range of backpacks that is really uh, customized according to the individual requirement of each kid. So to, therefore, we will create a, we will design a modular backpack with a wide range of backpack offerings that will be based upon each kid's personal requirements. So after interaction and user survey with parents and kids, we found that the majority of parents found difficulty uh, for getting the perfect size for their kids' backpack. And another uh, insight that we found that majority of kids found uh, face difficulty while uh, because of leakaging of their uh, uh, lunchbox uh, food uh, in the backpacks. And another thing is that majority of parents buy their backpacks uh, mainly offline rather than online to get their look and feel and size. But then also they have problem with proper size. Yeah, and another main feature that parents want in their backpacks is about that how their backpacks can be less weight. Yeah, so after this, these are some major problems that we found from the insights that from user services, size of the backpack is not right, there is no customization, not enough number of pockets, and there is not weight distribution also. Options available are focused on aesthetics more than functionality. Options which are functional are not aesthetically appealing to the kids and no awareness amongst the user about the parameters for a good backpack and limited options in terms of functional variety. Uh, and after that, we came up with a solution and fun and easy modular backpack according to the personal needs and requirements of each kid with a wide range of backpack available on customized needs. Why we make a backpack? Because it can easily customize personal wide range of available catering to everyone's needs and minimal components to ease in production. So how do we provide a perfect backpack? by innovating in materials, design, and production. So we develop a lean uh, canvas model for our backpack. So uh, customer segments are kids 4 to 12 years and parents. And the problems we found that size, no customization, less functionality, more components, and different style reduce the production uh, efficiency. And thus also increases the uh, cost and uh, of the backpack. The solutions we thought about modular backpack, easy to customize according to the need of this kid or parents, reduce number of components so that it can increase the efficiency and also decrease the cost. And the unique value propositions was uh, our modular backpack will help to consumers in customizing backpack as per need and, and buying power and changeable uh, front printed design will keep new, new, newness of the backpack for longer time and also help to engage in uh, backpack to the kids. Unfair advantages was highly automated production cycle and use of silicon rubber for molding water bottle pouch and lunchbox pocket. The channels through which we're going to sell would be a swag pack websites, uh, e-commerce, retail shops, distributor networks. The key metrics would be a number of backpacks sold in peak seasons, customer rating on e-commerce website, followers on social media. The cost structure for a model was uh, marketing and advertisement, employees, production development, and transportation, and technology platform. The revenue from which we generate will be sale of the backpack to the end users via website, e-commerce retailers. Partnership with schools, making websites open to bad brands, other bad brands that can, that can change on commission on our sale. So basically, then what we did, we tried to develop, you know, four types of personas and different age group of personas. Where one was four year old, second was six year old, third was nine years old, and the fourth one was eleven years old. And accordingly, with that persona, the problem of parents that they were facing with each of the, you know, different personas that we created. Then we went to the next part of it, you know, developing a idea generation sketches. We were trying to, you know, uh, brainstorm what type of batch we should make and 
what features that can be included in a bag because what happens we have to think in all the directions where product should be something that can be you know a product uh, production efficient also it should be new something design should be new and material also something new can be used so we came up with this you know our uh, design where uh, we tried to mix the two designs if you remember the initial days when the bags used to come for the kit they used to be in a horizontal manner and after a time the came where we got this you know a vertical shape bag bags so somehow we tried to mix the both you know essence of those horizontal also and the vertical also and to create something new out of it and we came up with this idea where we will try to construct and reconstruct the pockets and the panels of the bag according to the need of the consumer so basically this was the final prototype that we came up with so basically what happened in this so the front panel that you are seeing can be changed to a different you know different types of panel or the print as per the kit's you know requirement or the kit's liking and the features that we try to put into was like you know detachable id card holder sternum strap on the shoulder strap because what happens you know the, when the weight of the bag increases they usually the shoulder strap tends to fall from the shoulder of a kid so we try to introduce a sternum strap that will hold the shoulder strap for them and will maintain the balance of the bag and then put in the gps tracker because we found out with the some parents that you know they're worried about the you know safety of the kid little technological aspect of it you know like a voice assistant to make it little more engaging for a kid where you know kid says like hello swag pack and swag pack says hello gorav so and if i ask you know what time it is then it tells me okay it's 12 o'clock or 3 o'clock like that and then giving a very important features like you know reflectors in the backpack and also a uh, you know lot of kids said they want some secret pockets or lot of pockets so we tried to introduce a secret pocket also also to increase the sales of the whole brand we introduce the additional merchandise where you can buy you know lunch box separately pencil pouch separately wet pouches or the wet water pouch is separately and replaceable front panels that can be customized according to your kids need so this is the size chart we took for this you know age group where you know one is around 151 cm and other is like 135 132 and how the bag size is you know not changing much uh, we have tried to make the construction of a bag in a way where you know the size can remain constant and only the components the required components can be attached and can be detached from the bag so basically then what we did we tried to you know we can't give so many features with such a low cost price you know so we divided those features into three portions where we made a premium range uh, mid range and low cost range so premium was around 2900 to 3500 where we were trying to give voice assistant gps tracker uh, modular backpack print customization five replaceable front panel the detachable organizer and then the medium range was around 1500 to 2900 where we were trying to give you know only gps tracker modular backpack secret pocket two replaceable front panel and a detachable organizer and at the lower cost we are just giving one replaceable front panel modular backpack and secret pocket and also our idea was you know keeping the design you know over all the skeleton of the bag same and just adding features to it so what will happen you know it will somehow uh, you know when kids will see other kids buying it so it will they will try to push their parents also you know ki please buy you know more pockets for us please add this also in our bag so this can be something you know that can increase the sale of a overall brand so then we try to you know develop the business model canvas of this where we try to you know uh, reduce the customer segment which is you know preschool kids who don't have a proper size backpack and our parents who can't not get proper size and capacity backpack for their newly going school kids parents who want safety features school kids who wants to play with backpack parents who doesn't want to buy a backpack for kid you know every year and kids who like customization in their backpack and the key partners with kids studying in preschool and parents who skip uh, who skip started going to school and key activities that we have to focus on is like bag development testing with user production setup material finalization and a marketing content around it and our key resources were innovative material minimum components for ease of production because our product should be production friendly so we are trying to cut down the unnecessary components that reduces the, that increases the operation of a product so definitely we are going to save money on it so that we can make more profit out of it and then improving design as we test over a period of a time engaging an attractive backpack creating a brand image overall and our value proposition will be perfect size fit modular design durability and quality that is very foremost easier to customize easier to produce and giving for kids and cost friendly 
Customer relationship will try to feedback, take feedbacks from retailers and distributors and social media platform. They will be a promoting our brands and products. And also we'll set up a team of a customer support, which can, you know, directly, you know, uh, is the problems of a user or a customer. Then finally, the channels where we will try to, you know, uh, promote will be our, like our own website, word of mouth, social media and media coverages. Then cost structure will come like, you know, uh, setting a R&D team where we can set up and we can test this idea, then unit set up accordingly and marketing cost because we need to promote the brand and the production cost if we go for a, you know, production of like 100 or 200 bucks. Then revenue stream for the brand will be e-commerce website like Amazon, Flipkart, Mindra, and Etsy. And then, you know, making our own swag pack website, partnering with school institutions for bulk order, selling range of products like, you know, stationary pouch, lunch box, water bottle, etc. as a combo and partnering with retailers and distributors for maximum part of India so that we can have a wider range of audience. The scalability and future scope. So what will be the scalability and future scope of this swag pack? So right now we are focusing on three to 12 year and accordingly we will increase the age group from 12 to 18, 19 to 25 and then including professional and corporate bags as well into this. And then collaboration with different brands for merchandise like Cartoon Network, Disney, Marvel, Warner Bros, video gaming industry, so that we can bring those characters into our bags. And then partnershiping with public schools and government schools, we can have a more bigger audience. Then opening our retail stores in mall, airport, and major shopping areas of cities. And then achieving circular economy, that will be our you know further goal where we'll try to recycle and we'll try to get the bag, you know, after a bag cycle gets over. We'll try to take that bag and we'll try to give them some reward points of coupons so that they can buy again a bag from our own brand. So this is all about Swag Pack. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, I'm happy that uh, whatever points which I suggested you incorporated. I was looking forever, you have forgotten anything. So almost all points covered, so I have not many questions, but still a couple of things which I just would like to highlight. Since this is your uh, business plan or business model, I think which is good, but uh, I think you should also highlight what is the message you are going to give to the mar uh, market or maybe the potential customers, maybe parents. Mm -hmm. so basically, you should highlight like a safe flexibility and easy to use. Mm -hmm. Also, what is what is important is a washable. Yes. Because children, you know, they, they keep uh, their usage is different when, when they return home, they throw it, you know, at home. Okay. So it is the machine washable or something you should have because you have mentioned though, it is, it is a canvas, but still, if you add something that it is a washable, then people, uh, the parents will be very happy. Uh, I want to ask you one question. You have indicated you need this slide that uh, collaboration with other brand merchandise. Uh, have you ever checked up uh, how much they charge you? Got all. Warner Bros was charging us around 50 lakhs for, you know, getting the Joker the face. Yeah. Yeah, so it sounds good, but I think there is a catch and they, are, they bloody squeeze out too much. So if it's a startup, then you can't afford to, to exactly. spend as much money on that. Mm -hmm. So you people right. are smart, smart designers. Mm -hmm. So you should not use the same character which are popular, but you can bring some similar and make cartoon out of it. Yeah. And children will be happy because That's they true. will immediately connect a usse jaise dikhta hai, which is fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but great job. I'm happy. Thank, yeah. you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. So, Nakul? Yeah, uh, so I have a direct question to the group. So, if you look at your business model, what, what, what is the amount that you would seek to start this venture? Uh, we need actually 5 lakh to start this venture. So, I am primarily concerned with this cost structure. Your idea is excellent. This market requires something like this. If, even though there are many players in this market, right? There are many local players also, regional players also, yes. right? Uh, my only concern is one which Professor Ashok also mentioned, right? Being designers, you would have to design your own characters. The second yeah. is, mm -hmm. uh, in order to make it a reality much sooner, wouldn't it be better to have subcontractors to whom you let them know how to manufacture and you get hold of that stuff and you just take the responsibility of connecting it back to the market? Yeah, yeah that also sure. we can do. Matlab, it's yeah. a very good thing to do, but still, you know, matlab, if we have our own setup, we can control the quality, you know. Won't and five lakhs be a, a meager amount to set up? No, but still, you know, I feel, you know, if we can, because, you know, we have to develop something, you know, if we have to develop one buckle, 
so we have to get the development cost given to the you know vendor we have to give the development cost for the mold making and all that. so for the initial step you know we need this much because you know once the mold is developed and things are made then we don't need to pay for the mold and all again so okay. you know for the initial step we need this much to make to develop molds and all okay if you look at this market there are many players yeah. right mm -hmm. I am not sure whether uh, none of them provide these customization solutions because there are high-end players also in this. I was just searching on the net, customize school backpacks, yes. right? So they also have an array of offering wherein they have a design. Maybe I as a parent, maybe I as a kid can choose and pick and choose and have a bag made for myself. Right? So you would have to see how close are you looking at the reality perspective. Yeah. And uh, yeah. for that, you would have to actually look at what are the number of players and that once you look at the number of players, what they offer, probably your pricing would also change. Yeah. If you go back to that right. pyramid, uh, inverted pyramid. Uh, yeah, this might also accommodate the market scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. right. And uh, is it, uh, how, why are you only focusing on the students? Why not directly start from professional and come down? Because these are questions which you need to answer. I don't want yeah. answers right away. Right? These are like food for thought. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. there the per yeah. ticket size of a bag may be much larger. Yeah. Right? And your value capturing ability will be much more higher. Mm. The school market, you're looking at volume. Mm. Yeah. Right? You'll be able to decide which market to enter, which market not to enter, avoid or enter in future, depending on looking at that market. Yes, because yes. this is a space which will exist as a gap forever, right? Even if you come with your solution, there'll be something or the other which might be expected. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The desire from the user, from the design thinking perspective, from the, mm -hmm. the desire of the user is unending for all these kind of utility products. Right? So I think the only gap which I see is probably you should look at the outside market, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, start bringing in more uh, realistic perspectives so that you get much more confident to take this forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. Before, I think it was a good uh, initiative. I suggest you need to even test the market. And for that, if you need some few quantities, say 50 or whatever, mm -hmm. the business to get it, get it done is at uh, Dharavi mm -hmm. in Bombay. Mm -hmm. If you go to Dharavi, you will get mm -hmm. cost, cost effect. They exactly do as per your, your requirement. The quality, quantity, everything you can do it, and you get a get a better rate. So to test with, to for, for testing purpose, I think you can get it made there. Test it, you go around with the dealers and the rear user, get validated, and then probably you will feel confident, and then you can make an investment. Yes, mm, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you want uh, the like uh, the uh, professor uh, Deepak John? You like to quickly say something to the students? I have just compliment, uh, not as much uh, like the solutions or questions. So a very excellent ideas in terms of like very, very interesting proposal when you have, because I'm looking uh, at this as a customization is a, one of the major USP of this whole product. So, and, uh, and I uh, uh, agree with uh, like Nakul suggested, you should, uh, instead of looking from the children's perspective, why not just go to the professional and come down? Mm -hmm. Because they are the people who are going to pay you. And if you, I, I can look at your uh, like segment, so most of the things which you are incorporating, which is going to work, like the um, vice assistant, GPS, and all those, they have to pay for that. Okay. So maybe first pitching with the professionals and then uh, modifying and then coming down uh, to the children. That is another thing. Right. Uh, that can be done. So, yeah, but excellent proposal. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Are you purchasing the right bag for your child? How can you tell if the backpack is right as per your child's requirements? That is what Swagpack does. It caters to all your demands from selecting the proper backpack to the concept of a door-to-door -door product presentation and offering online product customization to empower customer decision making and participation on the digital platform. When a user personalizes a backpack, they will have the option to customize the bottle pocket, shoulder strap, print, utility pocket, rain cover and more. 
they will also have the option to choose from the different doorstep display variation for which they will be charged a small fee which we will refund to the customer after they purchase the backpack now taking all of the numbers into account from the initial setup of a work environment to the final delivery of a bag to the consumer we will need a sum of 12 lakhs inr so for the next group uh, uh, we have uh, you know uh, unmesh uh, very very glad Hi, to have uh, yeah yeah unmesh here so let me quickly introduce unmesh uh, to all of you uh, unmesh also is along with devdeep here experienced global design professional with specialization in design for new business he worked in numerous uh, you know large uh, companies across india and china designing variety of sector categories uh, you know uh, is my you know like uh, junior in idc we were together uh, over a year so very close friend and he's worked in healthcare consumer lighting automotive industrial and fmcg crafts and education space and of course you know like last time i met him when he was in honeywell and of course he's proficient in ux strategy is proficient in facilitating end to end collaboration and uh, you know multiple areas you know like uh, welcome unmesh and uh, uh, you know like uh, please along with devdi we like you to give some comments and students please be very clear we have to you know finish your presentation in 10 minutes just to see what you're doing give us a gist and we will try to take feedback from both devdi and unmesh right away um hello all i hope everyone's having a pleasant morning so we are a team we are content that's what we calling ourselves uh, we are positioning ourselves as a vr content studio uh, that is focusing on um, educational content at the moment so why educational content so um, we've always had knowledge passed on uh, from generations to generations to us uh, through parents through schooling etc but we seldom analyze those analyze that knowledge and hardly or never um, have synthesized them to create something new out of it. So this sort of ignited something within us and uh, we went along that tangent to discover more about education and how uh, we could aid as a studio to that particular segment. So through VR content, what we uh, plan to do is to enhance learning through virtual reality content. So our product through the use of virtual environment caters to institutions uh, who wish to aid and enhance high order thinking skills by providing visual stimulus and filtering abstract perception, unlike other digital learning materials. So um, these were from a uh, few of the problems that we identified from uh, discussing within us, uh, within ourselves. So these were uh, primarily assumptions that we still needed to be tested. Uh, so from these assumptions, our learnings were that um, less learning outcome overall, a more emphasis on rote learning than practical utility, learning level is not the same and lack of skill-based education. So our problem statement was uh, condensed down to learning modules to enhance cognitive skills for grades 5th to 10th. And why grades 5th to 10th? Um, uh, primarily because 5th uh, fifth uh, fifth grade is a shift from your uh, primary to elementary education. And that is when we believe the child moves on from the home to the universe. That is, um, the child looks at things, questions, things, asks um, a lot of, uh, has questions within themselves, etc. Through this problem statement, why? Um, we primarily try to answer or uh, question ourselves with why, how, and who. Uh, so why many schools continue to promote traditional one-size-fits-all approach uh, in teaching, and not all students can adapt to rigid and fast-paced style of learning? How do students and their respecting learning environments jointly contribute in cognitive and psychomotor skill development was something we were questioning ourselves with. And who do we cater to? Classrooms, independent learning uh, was still a question for us. So this was a um, um, very initial stage of business model canvas. Uh, this was as and when uh, through Professor Chakravarti's module when we were uh, going through uh, a certain flow, we thought why not make a rough draft for us to see how we move from this to a final canvas, which is also a rough draft at the moment. But uh, so here you can see from the view of it that it is so full, it is so complete, it has so many things in it. And we were very content. We thought, oh, we have everything sorted. Uh, what is like, we have all the channels specified, revenue streams specified, etc. And then moving on to that one thing that disrupted everything for us, uh, which was customer discovery. Uh, moving on uh, to Sneha. Sneha will take over now. So 
as firstly we started we had three customer segments that were parents who were homeschooling their kids teachers and school management we also looked for potential cast, company customers which can buy our vr content and incorporate in their business so we uh, firstly talked to a very young parent who is school homeschooling their kids so there were some assumptions we started with that were that vr experience will increase cognitive skills and learn by doing approach will aid or improve cognitive skills so these were some of our assumptions that we were testing through these customer discoveries and the questions we were looking answers for were like what how they will define good education or uh, what are the skills they will focus on more so from this interview we actually learned that for a young parent who is advanced in technology says that technology is a must for learning nowadays and how they focus on learn by doing approach more than theoretical skills so after this customer discovery and the few more we did we uh, narrowed it down to three things we want to focus upon that way that how communication can be put in simpler term, terms how we can incorporate activity related to subjects and how we can promote independent learning which caters to specific child's needs so after these customer discoveries we thought of doing a potential buyer or potential competitor study for that we uh, looked into photon vr and chashud will explain from there so we we'll looked on to our competitor that is going to be a photon vr and currently what photon vr is doing so we uh, when we were doing the competitor study we actually learned that photon vr is currently generating interesting and animation videos that actually make education interesting exciting and joyful and that and because of that they have an immersive experience of this uh, 3d environment they also create like 3d environment where they take you to walk through and you can actually experience it and they have some interactive activities that you can feel you can touch and you can enjoy that by doing this we also by when we are doing the competitive study we found out like what photon vr is currently focusing on so they actually they are currently focusing on like uh, six uh, so they have like six schools that they are focusing on four from gujarat and two from karnataka and they have like more than 2000 students currently that are using it and uh, we also found out that they have a government generated funds as well as some fine self financed schools that are funding them and currently what they have done is like a 500 activities that they have generated and they are targeting to this uh, uh, their the six schools and uh, from the last year they have generated like 1 crore of investment and then they are targeting around 36 crores of investment and uh, they they actually did one test in which they actually uh, uh, tested uh, their vr on a deaf and dumb school and uh, with that they found out like the students that were deaf and dumb they actually found out that the activities that they have tested is were really uh, beneficial and interesting for them moving on vinisha Uh -huh. uh, we actually have the segments divided there were the students schools and industries and schools what the things that they are going to uh, you know, the value proposition that they are going to have is like alternative tuitions increased uh, retention of topics and immersive learning in schools they are mainly going to encourage collaborative learning and there should, there will be a dedicated vr lab where you can go experience and and have a realistic and a 360 view and the channels that they can focus on is like app website and social media with that they can have customer relationship and they can they, there is there can will be a tenure period that they, they they can lock their time period for there can be a recurring relationship with schools as content is given like one year ka content diya jayega moving on to ragul uh, the next few slides uh, shows how we iterated from the lean canvas model to the business model canvas uh, i'll quickly tell you guys about how we plan to make our modules and how we plan to sell it we're not going to be this traditional production house where we hire 50 people get a building maintenance management and other factors we rather have for example say a 10 artists and designers who have full creative control and we use uh, digital networks such as upwork and uh, fiverr.com to make our content in terms of how we plan to sell it we initially want to go to school management and get pre orders as an initial uh, investment to also motivate investors to invest even more to talk about two of our revenue streams one would be a standardized a library of vr content that the whole school the school can purchase as a whole or we can make customized content for the schools individually as well 
in terms of how the content strategy that we followed in making our modules, we sort of saw a few control factors such as a you know, degree of control, the anticipation of events, the physical environments, modifiability, some sensory factors that in involve environmental richness, multimodal presentation of the content that would make sure that we are unique compared to our competitors. Of course, there are distraction factors such as isolation, selective att attentiveness, and of course, interface is going to be completely new for everybody. So the awareness is always important. And we do have some realism factors that inform consistent, so that information is consistent with the objective of the virtual environment we made and the meaningful of the experience as well. Can we just quickly take 20 seconds to show one small segment that we created? In the structure of the forest, at ground level there are shrubs and creeper plants, then you will find short trees of around 20 to 30 meters high, and then tall trees which goes to 60 meters high. These trees are tall because there's a competition among the trees for sunlight, the taller ones enjoy the maximum amount of sunlight, they constantly struggle and fight to grow taller so they can have maximum sunlight. Usually the uppermost branches of the trees act as an umbrella which looks like a canopy. These canopies allow little sunlight to reach the ground. Leaves of the tall trees tend to be large, long and have a narrow ending at the tip. The reason the shape of the leaves is like this is because they have adapted to high rainfall. The shape of the leaves make the raindrops run off quickly. If that doesn't happen, then there will be fungus and bacteria on the leaves due to the warm temperature. Remember water and heat creates moisture and moisture is good for bacterial growth. Very good. We see your action plan too, Vinisha there. Very nice. <laughs> and, and, and I told you this is a lifetime journey. So you're, you know, we are expecting a lot of you to take this as your student projects later on. Umej, you want to say something about the students? Yes, course? yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm glad I'm mentoring your team because I think I'm, my work is quite easy. <laughs> Which I have not done anything. I think this is wonderful. I mean, I think you used all the tools and process that is required to, you know, reach a business plan and i think that's really impressive i think this is uh this is great you know so what i feel is your business model canvas and lean canvas as you said made you think you know very precisely and i think you identified the problems uh, and i'm assuming you know you identified these as very high value problems for which people would be willing to invest right and there are no good solutions yeah uh what what i also noticed normally i encourage you know, if there's a strong need and a problem that you identify, then you find a tech uh, solution or a solution to that. You know? Whereas you started with AR, VR or whatever, you know, some sort of immersive learning kind of a thing. And uh, what I find interesting in that is, you know, typically, you know, that's a kind of a core technology trend and people want to do something in AR, VR. So only the the downside of such thinking is sometimes people don't need that technology there might be a simpler way to solve the same problem so i think that's the place where you need to be a little bit more uh, careful and that you're not overwhelmed only with the technology and don't miss the challenge of actual learning actual interaction uh, that happens either between the content and students or the teachers, students, and the content, or you know, and 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 such like things. I think that's a very important thing when you if you build a solution forward. I like the way you also target. You divided your target customers from consumers to you know the content places like schools to more like businesses. And to me, I feel if if it could be evolved as a tool, learning tool, uh, I think it will be valuable not just for education industry, the target that you're planning, fifth to ten, but it could also be valuable in the corporate sector. I mean, there are a lot of complex things corporates need to train people, their maintenance engineers, their production engineers, and this amount of money spent on such trainings is humongous. So if similar principles could be applied on such uh, training, then you could create specific content. Now, what you have to remember is, 
you know it's very easy to talk about ar and vr or or you know mixed reality as a as a as a as a you know core technology but the content creation becomes a fairly huge challenge you know and, and then i think it gets into completely different realm in terms of how you mix realities right uh, and reality and virtual so i think there lies the challenge and i think you need to really work around that you know how do you combine that because uh, if it's just a virtual content then it might be as good as watching a video and you know something like that right but how do you you know build in interaction between the real and the virtual i think there lies the success and the uh, immersive whatever nature of this kind of a tool you know so i think i think overall i'm very happy to see your uh, business plan very happy to see the flow identification of problem and also how you plan to build solution i think i think it has a lot of potential and i think you should keep keep it up and as professor chakravarty said you know turn it into your not just final project but i think you should turn it into your startup you know yeah thanks unmesh there and uh, devdeep uh, you know we would like to take your you know feedback and uh, comments for the students and i think what i in addition like to everything that umesh said was that you know you admitted your kind of your failure but not really a failure because you learned from it because you said this was our earlier bmc and we had the moment we went out and we realized here are all the things that is probably wrong assumptions and so on i think that's part of the learning curve you know you start with probably idea abc you talk to customers you go to def then go to some more customers you go to dhi and finally what to take to market will be xyz so i think that's part of and the fact that you are upfront about it so i think that's very good i think your customer discovery your competitive landscape you know you studied this photon vr and all okay so again repeating what you may said um for the content itself i think again you know there are two parts to the story one part is the tool called vr and there's a whole body of experiences out there on on google glass to oculus to valve and all of them used in different applications there's a mix between ar vr and i think the one, the niche that's kind of taking off from what i sense is the gaming the 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 you know the participant participative gaming where few people are coming in and kind of gaming so i think there's a tool aspect and there's a content aspect okay and i think um what you probably need to figure out again just reinforcing what umesh said was that you know um what kind of content will lend itself to that additional experience of a vr tool okay and what is that incremental value see when we went from offline to online and there's already things like zoom fatigue and all coming in so people you know are sick and tired of zoom and they want to get into the real world okay so you're going from online to offline sorry offline to online going to go back to offline if covid stops and now you're taking it to zoom where it's even more kind of individualistic so you have to find content where that additional value comes in yeah second thing in from a design perspective also it suggests that you know go through the experience why did google glass and all or oculus lift which is a more 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 sophisticated version of oculus quest why did it not take off to mass adoption experience it empathize with it okay you have done the competitive study fantastic okay looking at a laptop screen is already strenuous for the student for 8 hours so when you expect someone to look at or especially a school kid or someone to look at put on this goggles for 4 hours 3 hours 2 hours 1 hour 8 hours what does the experience look like to summarize i think fantastic i think that you've got you've nailed the process okay you just have to go deeper on the on on the unique value prop and even for industry segments okay a, a lot of companies have tried um teaching through this ar vr That's, to my knowledge it's not really mass adoption so it goes back to what is the unique content niche where you can add value and then experience the tool itself how comfortable or how adaptable it is you're very early you have already covered a lot of ground you have gone from abc and a pivoted once not a pivoted kind of refined to def expect a few more twists and turns by the time you get to market and we you probably got to market with xyz that's okay 
Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Deep, and thank you so much, Unmesh. I think students, you are extremely lucky, and I'm very grateful for both, you know, Dev, Dev, Unmesh, and all the others like you know, SK, and who's joined from far off location. You can just imagine the type of backgrounds which uh, you know the the Dev, Dev has come from, and they could be really valuable. So please be in touch, and you know, we could continue our journey. This is Team VR content. We imagine, enhance, and extend what's not there. Our team includes me, Vinisha, Kumar, and Ragul. A virtual reality learning module catering to grades fifth to tenth aims at providing a customized alternative to the otherwise traditional classroom learning environment, using which students are focused on increasing their cognitive skills. We stand out because we aim to enhance learning through virtual reality content. and a product through the use of virtual environment caters to institutions who wish to aid and enhance high order thinking skills by providing visual stimulus filtering abstract perception unlike other digital learning materials thank you uh, we'll go to the next team uh, so we have uh, uh, the next team our uh, you know like uh, a colleague from uh, the the desai city center for entrepreneurship uh, devdeep uh, devdeep are you there I said good morning. I'm Hi, here. good very morning, Gary. Very, very good to see you. And let me quickly introduce you. Uh, introduce you first to the students. Devdeep is a senior business executive with three decades of experience in global leading corporations. For the last several years, dedicated to developing next generation leaders and entrepreneurs at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, and Enactus India. Currently, of course, he is a you know professor of practice, conducting entrepreneurship courses uh, and workshops, mentoring started startup teams, and developing industry academia partnerships. <laughs> Wonderful! In fact, I you know the, the you know like was in touch with Devdeep a couple of years back too. But then you know again you know after Devdeep has come in here now with us, so we treat him as our you know colleague now. So we will hopefully that will rub much more entrepreneurship uh, skills into our you know into our uh, sort of uh, you know uh, into our otherwise very mundane academic uh, you know uh, uh, paradigm uh, so team 9 uh, uh, go ahead go ahead please start uh... yes so hi everyone uh, we identify our startup as tofa which is the hindi for uh, gift so we identify our ethos in preserving the cultural aesthetics of the country we started off as uh, with the collective vision to uh, preserve to do something that preserves the traditional arts and culture of the country so this is our small team we have two engineers two designers one interior architect and so uh, i think we i can proudly say we are a diverse team who are uh, collectively working towards this aim now uh, you know how mattel is known for its barbie although it merchant uh, it manufactures a lot of uh, different kinds of toys and same way fun school is mostly known for its uh, lego set but you know uh, there is no indian toy market toy giant that uh, has made its mark in the world so and and in fact uh, indian toy market just uh, takes up about uh, 0.5% of global uh, industry so uh, we uh, we at tofa we hope to make our mark in in a way that you know indian toy market is also known among people so uh this is our collective vision we uh, we decided we need to do something to uplift the traditional indian toy market so uh in in order to do that we uh we will be promoting we'll be capitalizing the uh the whole market we'll be endorsing and also in the process educate the people about our cultural ethos aesthetics everything so uh after a, a number of uh, customer surveys interviews we finally carved out a problem statement so just working towards the upliftment of uh, a traditional uh, craftsmen and artisans won't work in in a business setup so we decided our problem statement should be promoting indian handcrafted toys among new age parents and in turn build a market for indian toys so in this process we will be uplifting uh, the uh, overall uh, everything for traditional uh, uh, craftsmen and also we hope to disrupt the indian toy industry so we move on to our customer discovery we started off with the hypothesis that uh, uh, to promote that we will promote and disrupt the industry by remodeling the uh, Uh, the traditional toys so uh, 
it's it's mostly we we realize it's it's very mundane it's very boring it, it does not have any variety probably that's why people do not buy it do not tend to buy it also uh, so uh, moving on to the customer and product hypothesis mostly parents do not care what what toys they uh, their children play with so uh, the only thing that they care is about the safety standards of the of these toys so when when a parent goes to hamleys or when when they go to fun school or uh, purchase a toy that uh, that has a branded image over there they they are only looking at the safety standards mostly and uh, you know so when when they see this this brand they are convinced ki ha uh, The, uh, this will be safe for my child, and that's all they they care about. Now, in terms of distribution hypothesis, these traditional Indian toy market they they don't have that uh, endorsement that that could help help them promote their uh, products. So, from this, we drew our assumptions that probably remodeling how these uh, toys function. will help us better promote them uh, you know better market them we uh, so remodeling in the sense that uh, they do much more than just you know uh, going from here to here uh, better functions so it, it's it's in competition with tech toys uh, toys that have uh, multiple functions multiple stimuli so we need to do something more in it in order to uh, market these toys coming to our market segmentation now uh, this is the overall market segmentation for toys this is our product offering so finally we we decided uh, toys should be something that that safe that helps with skill development and uh, in turn also promotes indian arts and culture now uh, i will uh, ask ananya to take over so uh, after the customer interviews uh, we could uh, summarize everything on the basis of uh, customers needs demands color and uh, choices so uh, we could uh, infer that every child is different and we need to cater to everyone and uh, their likes and dislikes actually depends on the conditioning how they are brought up and kids usually prefer characters and the characters which are very much in demand are peppa pig pop it roll pj mas and they also like uh, superheroes and unicorn is one character which doesn't require license so we can get that and uh, even uh, parents are uh, preferring bis certified that is third party guarantee needs to be there for uh, quality and uh, children and parents both want engaging and interactive toys and every time the kids are uh, visiting a store they want a new thing with the same character which they like and uh, they usually visit weekly or twice twice in a week or maybe one monthly and most of the parents and uh, children they want to uh, like uh, they want a like parents want a price range between the range uh, 300 to 1000 that's very uh, like reasonable and uh, parents also suggested that uh, that there needs to be functionality and utility in the product because uh, otherwise it will just be a toy and it lie in one corner of the room and it it should also have a story to tell so uh, for the marketing we thought that we'll do uh, events in the mall and we'll also do digital campaigns and uh, we'll also try circulating pamphlets and uh, we'll publish it in the newspapers or magazines and we'll also have kiosks at the airport to promote it and we can also have hoardings and uh, promote it on social media and television is something that most of the students see so we'll also promote on that so sales strategy we thought of initially uh, coming up with a product on our own company's website and to be direct to consumers no third party will be involved and later to expand it we are thinking of uh, like selling it uh, on e-commerce sites like amazon and even hamleys we had gone through hamleys website and they had they had been selling a lot of traditional craft products and on first try also we'll be expanding it on these e-commerce websites and later we'll be uh, expanding in on uh, offline stores and like and uh, multi brand stores and we'll also give franchise so our pitch would be that we'll be targeting uh, kids between the range 3 to 5 years and we'll be doing design intervention to make these traditional toys more appealing catchy and interactive so that uh, like kids can cajole their parents into buying such products and we'll also accentuate on the functionality and it will also serve a purpose of utility so our uh, toys can also be utilized and uh, the price range would be very reasonable and sufficient amount of these products would go to the artisans to help them 
and uh, we'll cater to each customer because uh, we'll cater to the needs of each customer because every person is different and their likes and dislikes are different and we'll be selling it on company's website and later uh, penetrating in, into uh, e-commerce sites and offline stores speak with these uh, solutions in short so this is the first solution uh, like after getting the customer re uh, reviews uh, we thought of uh, using this. this is an example of uh, sms bihu culture like mm -hmm. small cute toys so we thought of making an making it uh, uh, an inflatable toy like uh, it doesn't fall down if uh, like if somebody push it down so uh, so it can be opened on this part as you can see on the uh, top part the head can be opened and one can use it for as a box uh, for their student properties so this is a simple uh, uh, car made of wood but the main thing is that the top uh, roof is made up of plastic transparent plastic through which one can just get interact with the mechanism going on inside so it can just giving an unique feel to the uh, the moment of the wheels and the gears that will get some uh, give some interest to the uh, inquisitive mind of this uh, children so this is this is a nostalgic gun that we used to play in our villages so i tried to we thought of adding this also it, uh, i think this will be five plus old year kit uh, product with the help of uh, air pressure one can just use it uh, like uh, play with uh, one another so uh, that's the thing i i i'd like to hand it over to uh, Sutin Nita for the next slides. Yeah, so uh, these are the wooden uh, toys of uh, Bengal. So they make wooden owls and stuff. Uh, so I added uh, some features like uh, on the wings, we can hang any bangle or the top head can be removed and you can use it as a pen stand. And the base also can be used as an agarbatti stand. And also it's uh, it, it can be assembled. This is basically a candle stand kind of and uh, parents wanted utility so this top is inspired by the thor's hammer and the bottom part of the top is inspired by the captain america's shield uh, so this is inspired by peppa pig yeah so we need we finalized on segmenting our target audience because there's in, in parents also there's like a still huge range we needed to cater to one particular audience um and we, we sorted that uh, beachhead analysis would be the best way to go by it so this is a small slide on that so we, we, we thought of finding that sweet spot big enough to get the positive cash flow and positive response towards our our, um, um, our idea and what whatever we are doing here. Okay, so here's an analysis of our beach beach market segment. A quick analysis. I'll just um, quickly run brush through this. So well funded target group. So we we finalized on that after the interviews that mostly the parents are really well funded and they are willing to put their money into the traditional toys and experiment with it. Um, easily accessible target groups. So mostly our target audience should be easily accessible, um, be it D two C or be it in person when they're walking in the stores so um the target audience the reach should be easy um scaling to the adjacent market after we conquer this market after we are successful in selling our traditional toys with the um, interventions we should be able to step up and if we want to expand in terms of scaling maybe we want to move on to some other product or other service maybe garment industry or maybe expanding our horizon from three to five years or maybe more so we should be um it will be easy for us to um, scale up um, compelling reasons to buy a product. Um, our customers should be really happy. The parents should be happy. The kids who are using the <clears throat> products, the toys would be, should have been really happy because we have done design intervention here. And with design intervention comes the tech upgradations, features, and um, other factors which which make our product in at which make our product um, as feasible and as attractive as any physical toy. Uh, delivering a complete product here, meaning that we also want to desire desirable product which will not only just solve the purpose, but which will also give the customer and the kid who's playing with it full satisfaction and happiness. Competition block here means like, are we good enough to break the norms and to actually target the leaders like Hamleys and other brands which are selling products but are not in the traditional market segment. So we got to have that um, competition block here as well. And lastly, passions and goal invested in the market. So um, the thing here is that we are starting this and we don't know until when this is going to continue, but we shouldn't be losing the hope and we should be sticking straight towards it that this is our idea, this is our notion and we are willing to work for it for the upcoming decade or so.
after defining the um, beachhead market, um, we, we went on finding our end user group. So this is a, a cute illustration here and a, a very descriptive user profile I'd like to talk about. Yeah, so it says as person who uh, chases two rabbits catches neither. So like like it's illustrated here, we are we are the dog here, and we are trying to catch two two target audience segments, which is not feasible, and we will not be successful. An end user study would be really um, helpful. So uh, the gender of gender is like parents. Anybody could be a parent. Uh, ranging the age range from twenty five to thirty five because they are more inclined towards producing and uh, letting their kids play with toys which infest learning and which have some feasibility and features. Occupation, uh, it doesn't matter are they working or non-working. Income should be five to seven lakhs per annum minimum. Geographical location is Pan-India because we are, we are uh, focusing on a D2C sort of uh, channel. So they can buy it from anywhere. Motivation here is that they, they really want their kids to be in touch and at par with the traditional, um, traditional arts and crafts of India, which are almost um, fading away of the kids who are being born after 2000s. They don't know much about it. Fears are that they're gonna miss on something. Fears are that like um, uh, somebody, um, Sandra, I think initiate, uh, described initially, that they only want non-toxic and um, um, basic products, basic toys for their kids. So their fear is that they wanna cater to that and have more than that. Interest areas being um, not only playing with digital products and not only playing with physical products which are available in the market, but also having that inclination towards traditional uh, and um, soft soft forms, soft forms of products. Why Tofa? Because we are we are trying to we are trying to cater here and we are trying to promote here something which is already there, but with design intervention so that it uplifts and um, it, it it is at par with the sales of uh, other physical toys so very good i think uh, like uh, let me also you know like uh, introduce uh, devina devina is our you know like alumnus from iit bombay uh, so they did this a very short exercise we want to make them meet people so you know it's from that point of view and devina also has her own founded her own company juan design and uh, she's very passionate about design and business so thanks devina for joining and uh, it's a very short uh, assignment for the students so devi uh, we'll have your uh, comments now please Thank you so much, sir. It's been a pleasure interacting with the entire team. Yeah, I, th I think they've, they've done a good job in Shutter, uh, such a short span. And uh, I've shared a couple of pointers with them over an email and would love to help them out in, in the following weeks where they can detail it out. Because as you rightly said, design uh, is probably just one person of it. It's more important to know what the customer wants, where, where the market is, and you know, the price point and analysis and stuff that we usually do. Although there's no short, short uh, you know, way towards a successful business. It's it's an iterative process, just like design. But when we do our uh, you know, like if you follow certain methodology, then our chances of success really increase manifold. So, so Devdeep, uh, like all to you now. So um first of all, I'm really, really impressed, huh? So I was just blown away, both from a theory perspective, because I think you've covered all the steps, you know, all the way from customer discovery through to solution design, through to go to market and, um, you know, the BMC itself. I'll give you quite, uh, you know, some feedback on the, and it's more of a dialogue, okay? I never pass comment on an idea because, you know, I may think it's a brilliant idea and it actually may fail. And my, I may think it's a stupid idea and someone can make a unicorn out of it. So I stay away, away from passing judgment on the idea. I focus on the process. Because if you follow the process, chances are you'll hit success. Who am I to judge an idea? So um, from the process perspective, not two comments which you may want to think of. One is if you look at, go back to the first step. Okay, the business model and the, and the go-to-market and all comes later. Go back to the very first step. Um, you know, um, you have already done a bit of it because you mentioned it. I would ask you to spend um, a little bit more time in terms of deciding who the customer is, okay? Because you said you are targeting young new age parents and also the children. Remember, there are two different sets of customers. One will buy because they will pay the money. One will use, the kids will use it. The parents will buy it. They may have very different needs. The parents may want their children to grow up in the traditional way, learn about traditional values and so on. The children may not be interested. The needs of the children may be 
fun, creativity, showing off in you know to the parents, uh, to to the kids, and to the you know so the needs of the new age parents, which will be in the twenties, versus the kids in the five to seven, may be very different. But unless you win with both of them, even if the kids like it, the parents may prioritize something else. Because you know all these robotics things are coming. Coding is coming at a class six, class seven. Where you know, so the kids may like it, parents may not want it. Parents may like it and buy it. Kids may not use it. Okay, so I'd suggest that you spend a lot of time, and there you use what is this concept of design thinking. Okay, and you know the first step of design thinking is the empathy, and the insights. I would urge, and I don't know whether Millie. Or Shutinita, or Ananya, or Sandra, or Anuban. Any of you have actually played with the kids? I don't know all the diagrams that you showed. I don't know whether you actually played with them. Okay, you got samples and played and became a child yourself. And did you play with your nephew or your niece or your neighbor's five-year-old kid? And did you film it? And when you filmed it, so you know, I would encourage Millie and you know one of you to go out and play with the. Young stars, you will also become a child, okay. And then once you become a child and you play, I would encourage one of you to film it. And I'd like you to encourage and see what exactly is working with the child. Is it the the, the joy, the sheer joy, fun joy? Is it creativity? What is it? Is it you know something to do with the class project education? So debrief the student with the parents' permission. Film it. And watch it very closely. So I would suggest that you know, in the dialogue and the discovery process, please go and play between five of you, and see what comes up with this with this, this thing. Okay. So I think that is very important in terms of understanding. I would suggest that you also spend a lot of time with young young parents, your bhabi, your brother, your sister, your cousin, whoever it is, your neighbor, and try and understand how does the young parent think. You have, you have made a lot of hypotheses. Okay, so you know, so just go deeper. You have covered all the steps. So you've got a very good plan. I just suggest that you go into step one and go very deep. Okay, establish the customer persona. I think you've got into psychograph, a uh, demographic, you know, um, economics, you know, seven lakhs and so on. One of the suggestion I would have is go to market, and I, I've volunteered to Professor Chakrabarti to spend time into separately if he wants me to. In the go to market, no, you've got some very expensive. Propositions go to the airport and kiosk. They're very expensive. Okay, get into what is called um, at a startup. You don't have the money, so go into what is called frugal, lean network kind of marketing approach, which basically means that in a building in Hyderabad or Bombay or wherever, the kids, the mothers will hang out together, right? The kids will hang out. You know, all the mothers are hanging out. The kids are hanging out. They play groups, crash, schools. Okay. Get one or two kids playing in that group. One or two mothers really excited about your proposition, and let then the mothers talk to the other mothers and the kids talk to the other kids. Okay, so make your customer your salesperson because you'll not be able to afford, you know, um, all this high expensive stuff. Yeah. So you know there are ways of being very digital. Um, there are ways to get into Instagram, etc. But leverage the power of networking. Go to a school. Go to a crash. Go to a play group. Win that. Then the, the word will spread into a building or a community or a club, a Rotary Club, Rotary Club, Interact Club. Okay. Then slowly get into Instagram groups. Okay. And get into what is called lean digital, um, so that your margins. There are a lot of challenges. Um, last comment. I know there's a lot of challenges in trying to revive the traditional, um, you know the, the the toy industries. Okay, the Chinese toys actually killed it. The low cost electronic with this music and light and you know they actually destroyed our tradition. So there are some um, challenges around the economics. Okay, but I think if you crack the the psychographics of the child and the mother and the and, and the father, okay, you can overcome the economics and the go to market and the supply side of it. Okay, but this is what India needs. Okay, this is what Will help millions of people who have gone out of business because of the Chinese low-cost electronic, and now the phones and everything. You will also create a culture of do-it-yourself. So I think it's a fabulous project to work on. And Professor Chakravarti, you may want them to put on the website of an NGO which I want to run. 
okay, which yeah. works a lot of these kind of social projects, social entrepreneurship. It's mm -hmm. called Enactus India or Enactus. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. send the link to you. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So you know, so Enactus basically works with se several of the IITs. I think IIT Hyderabad may have a team. I'm not sure, but all the BIT, VIT, you know, all the private colleges, KIIT, mm -hmm. and all, also with arts and science colleges. And you'll see a lot of these projects, which are social entrepreneurship projects. Okay, oh, it's a global one. It works around the world. This is the um, the global website. Okay, it works in 35 countries. Okay, and for toys itself, um, SRCC, which is a very good DU college, commerce college, they are working on this reviving toys. You know, um, uh, actually age-old uh, craft forms, and you know, um, I would encourage that as a tech college, those of you who are in ITs or any of the tech colleges, um, you may want to ally with a design college, a NIFT or, or National Institute of Design or whatever, and an arts and commerce college. So get the diversity of technology, you know, and arts and commerce. So um, I can talk more. I know I'm out of time. Sorry, Professor Chakra. No, no, this is perfect. But good job, Millie. Wonderful to see. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so good much. Job. Hello everyone, we are team nine. We call ourselves Tofa. We are Sandra, Millie, Ananya, Shrutanvita and Anirban. Our product is handicrafted modular toys. Um, our product helps new generation parents and traditional Indian artisans. This is beneficial for people who want to have safer toys that promote motor skill development for their kids. And it also benefits artisans who want to improve platforms to sell their crafts. Our product helps in increasing a, a traditional artisan's revenue. It also helps changing the mindset of parents about traditional toys. Our product also promotes unknown artisans' name and craft forms. Our product is unique and is unlike other factory-made industrially manufactured toys. And it is also different from toys which don't provide cultural learning and modularity. So that's the pitch for our product. Thank you so much. Hi, so good to see you, Sunil. <laughs> Wonderful to you know, catch up. And uh, we have uh, our IIT Delhi student, Akanksha Singh. She's also the, uh, you know, class representative as well as, of, uh, you know, uh, as a leader for the course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it is, you know, uh, her team, which is going to be present presenting today. And uh, it's also a learning objective for all of us. So hello everyone. Our group is very thankful for each of you uh, that you're here. And I'm Akanksha along with my teammates, uh, Sora, Bria, Senjuti and Shubham. And we're all very excited to share our ideas with you. But before that, I would need two volunteers from the audience to have a small activity. So I'd request uh, one of the mentors or panel members and to be player one and just one student to be player two. It's not a very difficult activity. So let us begin. Here is a series of different emoticons for different modes. And I want you to choose one number that depicts the emotion that you're feeling right now most appropriately. Vanima, five? Yeah. And Nirja, what about you? Six. Okay, let's do one more uh, round of say bingo. So player one, Vanima. I would uh, uh, like to ask you a few questions and you have to say uh, yes or no or a statement regarding the same. So have you had breakfast? Or dinner. Now we'll say dinner. Or dinner. Me. Yeah, for you, I think. I'll ask, have you had dinner today? Yes. Okay. And have you ever binged a TV show? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you stay up late? Uh, yes. And do you have a pet? Uh, my daughter has, so he's kind of a pet, yes. Yeah, and would you live on the North Pole if, if you had the chance? Uh, no. Uh, would you ever do a stand-up? No. Okay, thank you for your answers. Uh, I'd uh, go to player two. Uh, so, Nija, have you had a fracture? Uh, no. And have you ever slept through a class, honestly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you stay organized um kind of yes uh do you think uh do you give names to your things or belongings yes <laughs> uh okay and uh would you be an avenger if you had the chance maybe yes would you buy a telescope i'm not sure about it okay so thank you for the answers and thank you both of you for being such a sport 
so uh, basically what this activity is about we wanted to uh, show how gamification makes interactions fun quick and easy they are here to uh, help us interact without the boundaries of feeling awkward or weird about it within the span of just a few minutes we found out several things including uh, you know how vani ma'am and nija were feeling what they like what they want and all this gives us a number of conversation starters and ice breakers to interact with them in future if we wish to which is why we as a group bring to you lucid converse while playing and play while conversing i hand over to riya now yes thanks akansha so as was mentioned our vision here was to make conversations easier we went on to further discover why there is a need for conversations in the first place um, the way we interact with others and build relationships it has a major impact not only on our social lives but on our uh, physical mental and emotional health while for some this could be a cake walk it might not be the same for all we identified various areas where communi- communication gaps could occur uh, in our society and from there it was rather easy to narrow it down further because we looked at the innermost basic unit of a society which is a family literature suggests that new media has the potential to and is uh, actually already creating a monumental shift in communication among young adults and young people and the communication culture within an indian conventional family is in a swirl the question is not if uh, the parents and children are engaging or, or communicating rather it is how they are communicating and it's the quality of it parents and young adults that have moved uh, out of home for studies or for jobs have not just the generational gap to deal with uh, the distance and busy schedules also adds on to the dearth in their communication or in their conversations this led us to identify our problem statement which is how might we bridge the generational gap between parents and young adults perhaps using gamification to understand the nuances of this particular segment we interacted with people and users falling in this category Senjuti will take us further into customer discovery. Thank you, Ria. So, folks, now that we have arrived at our problem statement, it was time for us to understand our customers better. Let's go to this video for the same. He's just trying to explain. It's, it's a two-way thing. So. Uh, their presence. Their presence. Uh, yeah, their presence. It's like, what did you eat? When did you sleep? How was your classes going? I've learned a lot now that she is a lot. Important than maybe around ten, fifteen minutes, or I am growing. <laughs> But yeah, sometimes I get. No conversation. You need your mindset to be there. <laughs> so good uh, to you know talk to you all. So uh, these were a few snippets from interactions with our uh, with the parents, their children, or young adults from different cities across India. We try to understand how often do they communicate with each other and through what modes. What are the topics of the discussion? What is their daily schedule like? Do they even do activities together? If so, what kind? and the topics of discussion so uh this uh this exercise brought us closer to understanding the pathos of our users we understood that indian parents use whatsapp and facebook as the their most preferred medium to connect they are very active on whatsapp group chats they prefer audio or video calls over text they usually play online games like chess or ludo and they usually avoid talking about sensitive sensitive societal topics they also do miss asking their children for advice uh, on simple topics once they move out whereas the young adults have really hectic schedules they want to talk more to their parents and want to bring up sensitive societal topics but before they do that they kind of assess their parents mood before discussing these things and usually on a daily interaction their common topics use updates about their meals their academics or work so this exercise brought us uh, to our final customer segments uh the parents and young adults and we will take you through this journey through the point of view of our uh, parent damini age 47 and the young adult nupur age 23 so hi guys my name is saurabh and i'm going to run you through how our product comes into contact with and functions within an individual's life so nupur comes to learn about lucid through our friends she installs the app and opens it up so uh, during onboarding 
she is asked to input basic details like her name age and how much time she would like to spend on the app in a day so she gets to choose what topic she would like to talk about and uh, while deciding who she wants to play with she has the option to either play with an existing connection add a new connection from a contacts or invite a new person altogether in this case she adds her mother that is uh, damini from the contacts and she adds damini as her parent and selects the level of understanding she has with her mother so this in turn structures the experience of the game around her unique preferences so the game is divided into various levels and while first few levels are easy to get the user acquainted with the game later on each level kind of delves deeper into the individual's preferred topics of discussion so there are points for answering and uh, even for answering first and you can redeem these points for rewards in return so the technicalities of the game and the rest of the details will be explained by my friend shubham we try to keep the interaction simple and we also try to use a major popular medium of communication to use in the system with uh, so let's consider this example priya so uh, nupur gets the notification that today is your task and you have to ask the question so this can be a dice rolling thing and he gets the question of how do you feel today so this question will be sent to her mom damini and uh, your yeah, damini gets this on whatsapp on her whatsapp as she doesn't have the app and she doesn't have the expertise to use the app so it can be uh, how do you feel and she has to react with an emoji and uh, she reacts with it uh, with that uh, sign emoji with number 4 and uh, the app uh, register uh, the chatbot registers this and uh, the response is uh, registered with the points uh, rewarded to her uh, she can also uh, roll roll the dice herself and ask nupur the question also uh, and as as this level goes up uh, the the conversation becomes more impactful so the next question the next uh, game can be a spin the wheel and she gets here the n- number 8 and uh, the mom asks what do you miss the most and uh, so this level 5 now and the level 5 is the sunday trivia where uh, you where the parents are and the kids spend most of the time and they can uh, the question gets more personal the person has level, uh, as it level ups and so you can see who who what makes you the most happiest and uh, the question can be about the life partner it can be more uh, personal that have you ever cried or something and this all will be the ice breakers and conversation starters and as you uh, as you play the game you also collect the points and for example uh, damini collected 1000 points and uh, so the redeem system can be there are cards where you can redeem this points for example damini has 1000 points and there are various cards for example pick the outfit of the day so damini here picks the picks the card of pay, uh, pay me a visit and uh, because it's a game it uh, it can be a fun thing and uh, nupur has to give with it uh, to her home uh, and nupur gets uh, gets home and they spend a good time alone so how the uh, because the conversation are more personal and uh, privacy is the key uh, the the messages will be encrypted and the system won't be able to see the message uh, the messages will be only be seen by the users thank you shubham uh, so to get to the heart of our idea and to plan it better we then charted out a uh, lean models for both our uh, primary customer segments the parents and young adults we tried to eliminate all the unnecessary areas uh, to increase the success rate of the venture and to reduce the risk of the failure here the young adult uh, who wants to be able to make time and have conversations with their parents uh, is our early adopter from the customer segment uh he is captured by channels like influencer marketing adverts and such channels that are more relevant to them the value proposition here comprises of privacy personalization non intrusive prompts and so forth in the lean model for the customer segment of the parents of these young adults the problem area is quite different it addresses the challenges of not being able to consult their child for any help or doubt in relation to new age technologies not being aware of their schedule um, to have a conversation or a deep conversation with them and also apprehension about discussing sensitive topics and so forth the channels here would be word of mouth various tie ups that or the applications already in use by the parent 
the value proposition here comprises of ease of use, personalization, and facilitating icebreaker conversations. Under unfair advantages, we have the relative novelty of our idea and also the popularity of smartphones and internet usage that will aid us. Some of the key metrics that we would look into to evaluate our success uh, or our performance are the number of monthly active users, average revenue per user, number of downloads, user retention, and customer rating. These lean models uh, helped us to zero in on our problem to solution business plan. And uh, Akansha will take us further towards the business model canvas. So with the business model canvas, we were focusing on outlining what the advantages, what the targets, risks, and costs and opportunities would be of our businesses. And to interact and communicate with our value, uh, our value propositions to the consumer, we focused on the get, keep, and grow framework of the customer relationship. And then we mapped our key activities that would be supporting the business, like game designing and then creating and managing a tech infra and customer profiling for the personalized experience that we've been talking about. We also listed out our key partners, which uh, are the you know next step to um, building or bringing our uh, product to reality, which would be app stores and automated chatbots. The substitutes to our um, app could be the card and board games that are available or the different gaming apps that already exist. But there are also the compliments like phones and video calls or existing messaging platforms that will add on to our product and build its value. We also listed uh, you know, the profits and the revenues of how we would uh, generate the revenue. So the in-app purchases, the scenario-based expansion packs that we plan on uh, bringing forward. We also have a free and premium-based model uh, looking into affiliate marketing as well. So apart from that, we also fixed a cost structure, which was based on what we would have we, what we'd have to invest based on R&D, Play Store hosting, marketing and advertising, server handling and operational costs. So uh, with this, we'd uh, sum up our presentation and hope your interaction with us was uh, interesting. And now I'd like to open the floor for questions. Thank you so much. Thanks, Akanksha and team. That was wonderful. Very good presentation. We will request, uh, you know, uh, SK Singh now to just, uh, you know, check out, you know, basically, you know, see what he has to say about the whole journey. Yeah. So as you said, Chaku, I mean, it was interesting presentation, a lot of work and thought gone behind it. And it seems like a pretty cool idea that you can reunite two different generations and open a dialogue through gamification. So kudos on that. Uh, one thing I wasn't very clear, who's the audience of the presentation that we just saw? Right. It was not uh, an investor pitch. It was uh, discussing our initial idea with um, probably an audience to get their feedback so we can work on it better. So maybe like an mm -hmm. initial business idea pitch, not an investment pitch. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're just trying to figure out like how to pitch this to investors mm -hmm. and you're looking for inputs. Okay, uh, so one thing I would say that, I mean, investors, whether they are in Bangalore or Silicon Valley, you'll be lucky if you get two minutes with them, let alone a one hour presentation. Right. So I think what would really help is like, articulate your concept which talks about uh, you know what the idea is and why should i care and how will it make money like you know those two or three things if you can say in, in like short paragraph you have heard of the term elevator pitch i mean there's a reason people use that terminology because you know, if you're going from ground floor to 10th floor, probably you have two minutes, three minutes, depending on how fast the elevator goes. But if you can articulate in one slide with not more than, I don't know, uh, just throwing out there like, uh, you know, two sentences, two and a half sentences, uh, that would force you to crystallize 
what you really care about and what you're pushing for. Uh, because, you know, some of this looks kind of just because you want to make value proposition like five bullet points. So ease of use is given in this day and age. You don't get points for bringing ease of use because if you don't have ease of use, you shouldn't be in the business of creating any app. So that nobody will buy that kind of a fluff. Focus on what is the real value proposition. And also, I mean, in this, I think, what would really help punch up the presentation? Like we understand the generational gap and not being able to communicate. It's not a new problem now. It's like whether our parents and us, or it was our parents and their parents, they've always been that generational gap. So, and somehow if you can kind of break through that like quickly and, and in an argument or, or, or a pitch, that would go a long way uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, convincing somebody uh, that, you know, you have something that uh, worthwhile to consider, or at least even if, uh, you know, if I was a VC, uh, even though I may not write a check immediately after that, but I'm willing to sit down for a further conversation. So your, like the first pitch should be, like interesting enough from these point of views that if you talk to a VC or somebody close to a VC, they are willing to sit down with you and indulge you to explain or invest some more time questioning you. Uh, so, so that would go a long way. And, and those, like the boards are good for, you know, get, just collecting your thoughts. But, you know, when you're trying to present it, you have to kind of, go for the jaguar go for the kill very nice and i think uh, you know being uh, a very uh, you know like sort of uh, uh, we, we, in fact we should have given you know the uh, the whole uh, context should have been the elevator pitch situation uh, where you know uh, we would have from the customer whatever discovery they do they can do an elevator pitch so uh, you know maybe you could you could do a pitch right now in two minutes go ahead students we've got two more minutes <laughs> Akanga, this is your last skill you can do it <laughs> yeah so if i have to do a pitch i'd really say that uh, you know uh, how often do you talk to your children about um, their sexuality so uh, and if you do, or uh, if you do, that's great. But if you feel like there's still a gap or where your child feels like they can't come up and talk to you about it, here's a game and you can do it through this game without any trouble, without any, you know, awkwardness. You just have to play it and you would get through that phase of awkwardness and then the conversation can get deeper eventually. So if you want to buy it. <laughs> good. You gotta yeah, get... good pitch. And, and I would say like, instead of just focusing on the problem, because the moment you say that parent and children, immediately, you don't have to convince anybody that there is a communication gap, but focus more on like how you, you will solve that. I mean, just saying that gamification will solve it, uh, it, it it's not like the right answer uh, because Theoretically, you, one could say that about any problem or any challenge, but uh, if you can somehow boil it down, like this is why our game will solve it. And uh, yeah, so what I was saying is the first part is like we can we can quickly uh, say that, you know, there is a uh, the problem statement, right? I mean, that doesn't need much explaining. So that that's cool. But what we need to kind of focus more on like, next two things one is why our game is the answer uh, not somebody else's game and you know everybody i mean if you give the stock answers yeah if you give stock answers we did research we did that uh, you know that's good but we don't get points for that i mean we need to kind of say that we are doing this and somehow connect the dots there and the third thing is any vc they want to know how and why will they make money using, uh, you know, through that game, because, you know, uh, in-app purchases or, you know, uh, partnership, that's, that's again, like everybody does that, uh, but why somebody would be able to, somebody would be willing to advertise with you or willing to buy something, have at least one or two concrete examples there, 
which will help complete that story. Okay, can I get to like rephrase after this? I just thought of something. So okay, so I'd rephrase it in a way that most of the con uh, most of the conflicts arise from conversational gaps, and it is present all around us. We provide a solution that is personalized to your dynamic, and can be applied to all sorts of uh, situations. So if you feel like there are uh, there are conflicts, if you feel like there's a gap. a personalized solution to your kind of dynamic would be what our game is providing and which is why you should uh, you know take interest in our product hmm. yeah hmm. i mean i mean uh, my feedback still stands like try yeah. to get to specifics and narrow uh, really? like eventually you can diversify and solve all the world's problem where two political heads of state can solve the problem to your games versus neighbors and you know whatever choose one segment uh, yeah. and specific segment stick with that so thanks sk this is wonderful sk to you know like uh, listen to you and students see like hit on the nail you know you have to we have to understand the pitch uh, in that focus area uh, and of course uh, uh, we want to know the gameplay a little bit more the idea in the game which is doing the kill also needs to be you know showcased much much more you know strongly you did play it and you know of course i must tell you very good presentation you you know thought about it very well within this short time i think it has come up very nice of course you know all credits to you for that but i think uh, you know uh, you need to really focus on what uh, you know sk is saying and mani final remarks from you <laughs> yeah i uh... Um, great presentation guys uh, amazing amount of uh, work and ground you guys have covered from a very hazy concept to you you know you're getting it much more clearer uh, ditto to everything sk um, mentioned he uh, i think i think that's exactly uh, uh, right uh, what i uh, would add to that and probably he alluded to it already was that uh, you have to articulate your concept at the beginning uh, this kind of um, uh, Uh, stuff that's happening where we are all playing games through even zoom to keep uh, it interesting or thing unless we come up with either a shocker of a game or something so different out of the box um, the first part of the presentation uh, i think it needs a little more uh, what can what can i say to use a term in design umph so to speak you know yeah. to get that punch so yeah otherwise i think yeah sk put it all out really clearly so thanks vani and uh, sk this is you know like so grateful for your support and you know with very little timelines and very little things and we wanted to make the students experience this whole beauty of talking to you know a mentor talking to an investor no sk is like an investor <laughs> 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 so it was like it was lovely it was lovely thank you so much no, also i think if yeah. i could just say it was yeah. like a very heartening to see the current students in design Yeah. Uh, I wish I could present like the students what they did today when I was a student. So I think we have come a long way in terms of education and communication skills and so on. So kudos all around on that. I'd also like to uh, thank Vani, ma'am, because I think, like she said, when we presented to her our concept and our presentation was all over the place, and then she helped us. you know frame it better and make a structure out of it so thank you for your inputs as well hello this is team 10 a group of individuals with diverse skill set who came together to build a service called lucid how often do parents and children strike a heart to heart conversation our service lucid helps facilitate effortless interaction between parents and young adults who live separately to reduce the generational gap between them unlike the current modalities of conversation lucid uses gamification to make interactions easy and fun <laughs>